to Satan, pray to Satan, pray to Satan. Hey, Billy. What is it? Oh, I just wanted to see if you needed anything. And what are you doing out here? I'm breathing from my balls, Mom. You wouldn't understand. And can you give me some orange juice? All right, sweetie. Well, have fun with whatever you're doing and try not to strain yourself. You don't want to hurt your bum again. My ass is fine. Just give me my fucking orange juice. So some of you might be surprised that I'm doing a worst of the fitness industry video on Elliot Hulse and I admit the guy's training advice is really good and he also does give a lot of really good interesting life advice but Elliot often talks about becoming the best version of yourself and the guy isn't perfect he does get a lot of things wrong especially when nutrition is concerned and for all of you watching who are interested in becoming the best versions of yourself, and that might even include Elliot Hulse himself, then keep an open mind while watching this video. What you think you might know can always be wrong. And in this case, Elliot Hulse is really, really, really fucking dead wrong. Can you please tell me how I can go from being a vegetarian to eating meat? That's been the hardest thing I can think of right now. And do I still have potential do I still have the ability to become the strongest version of myself? Because I feel like I've wasted my time since September. I love this lifestyle, but if I'm not seeing any gains, I mean, it seems pretty useless. So I wanna know if there's light at the end of the tunnel, so please help me. Thanks again, Elliot. Now, let's see if Elliot's recommendation of going from a vegetarian to a meat-eating diet pattern helps us become the best versions of ourselves. I wouldn't start with what are called high purine meats. What you want to do is take a look at the purine spectrum. You're going to want to start, start to slowly creep up that ladder. Start creeping down up that spectrum of purines. For those of you who don't know, purines are nitrogen containing compounds found in high quantities in animal products and purines are metabolized by our bodies into uric acid and high uric acid levels not only increase risk of gout but also increases risk of all-cause mortality including stroke and heart disease. Best version of yourself. And interestingly, early primates lost the ability to neutralize uric acid when we lost the enzyme uricase, and high uric acid levels may induce features of metabolic syndrome, which would have helped our early ancestors store more fat. Now, that is a useful adaptation when there isn't much food around, but do you think in modern times, metabolic syndrome and storing fat will help you become the best version of yourself? Okay, sweetie, I got you your orange... Hey, what are you planning on doing with those nunchucks? Why do you think I'm learning nunchucks? I'm gonna beat the shit out of that asshole Keegan. You're just gonna get hurt and get yourself into more trouble. Give me those nunchucks. You know what? Fuck you, mom. You're so unsupportive. That asshole Keegan kicked my ass fucking twice. Now you wanna take my nunchucks away? Fuck you. Billy, not this again. Don't you dare leave this backyard. Billy. Fuck you, mom. I'll come back when you stop being such a fucking bitch. And unfortunately, Elliot tries to teach a lot of vegetarians and vegans how to become the best versions of themselves. Interesting question for my buddy, uh, James. Basically, he's been a vegan for several years, and his sex drive is horrible. He owes it to years and years of eating like a vegan. And the reason why he knows that it has been a byproduct of his diet is because he watched one of my videos last week where I said, look, if you're having trouble sleeping, and apparently he was as well, add some protein and fat type meals to the end of your day, as opposed to high carbohydrate meals. He took my advice, and boom! Sleep. Okay, first of all, high protein foods inhibit serotonin production, making it harder to sleep. Best version of yourself. And secondly, what the fuck does meat have to do with this? You know there are some high protein and fat plant foods, right? Go figure, right? Nourish your body with the foods that mankind has eaten since the dawn of creation. And your dick works and you get a good night's sleep. And when you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, just make an appeal to nature fallacy. It sounds so romantic when you say, it's the foods we're born to eat, doesn't it? Well, sorry but not sorry, but it appears we've made no physiological adaptations to eat meat, and even the editor-in-chief of the American College of Cardiology, Dr. 
Dr. William C. Roberts has stated that only herbivorous animals can develop atherosclerosis. Therefore, we have the lipid metabolism of a fucking herbivore. Funny how you claim we've evolved to eat meat, yet meat raises our cholesterol levels which ends up clogging our arteries and killing us. I'd imagine if we had evolved to eat meat, it wouldn't end up being our number one killer. And it seems that Elliot is getting his bullshit information mostly from two sources, the first of which is this guy, Paul Check. The more exercise you do, the more car carnivorous you are. Yeah, that, that's my body's need, yeah. The more flesh I break down, the more flesh I need to replace it. Bro scientist. And he also seems to follow the bullshit put out by the Weston A. Price Foundation. And I was at a Weston A. Price Foundation, uh, seminar several years ago when I was first studying nutrition. And if you aren't familiar with the Weston A. Price Foundation, then this video just says it all. My name is Sally Fallon Morell, and I'm the president of the Weston A. Price Foundation. Nutrient-dense foods like butter, egg yolks, whole raw milk, full-fat cheese, and liver are not villains, but foods that are the basis of good health. Yeah, so basically the Weston A. Price Foundation is a bunch of morons who cherry pick and intentionally misinterpret research to try and convince people that the foods that are responsible for our most common chronic diseases will help you live longer. Why do they do it? I honestly think they're just batshit insane. Hey there, Billy. What you doing with those nunchucks? Uh, hi, Mr. Stevenson. I'm just trying to learn nunchucks so I can beat the shit out of this asshole Keegan. Well, they're not my weapon of choice, but I could teach you how to use them. Really? Can you show me? Well, first of all, it's all in the wrists. There is absolutely no doubt that meat, dairy, and eggs cause our most common chronic diseases. I already demonstrated how saturated fat and cholesterol cause heart disease, but high saturated fat diets also activate pro-inflammatory genes and cause the buildup of intramyocellular lipids and cause the death of insulin producing beta cells, which promotes diabetes. Animal products also promote cancer cell growth through many pathways by raising IGF-1 levels, activating the mammalian target of rapamycin, methionine happens to cause oxidative stress and directly feed cancer cells. The list goes on and on, and the largest forward-looking study on cancer and diet ever conducted found that vegetarians have the lowest risk of all cancers combined, and many other studies have shown that vegans have the lowest diabetes risk. I think the best version of yourself is the version that doesn't get heart disease, diabetes, or cancer, or the many other chronic diseases that are caused by animal products, but I know the majority of you watching aren't really interested in living long and avoiding chronic diseases disease, you're only really interested in building size and strength and athletic performance. Well, this is what a vegan diet does to your size and strength. Patrick Baboumian is a world record holding vegan strongman and Elliot, what the fuck's your excuse dude, uh, you used to compete in strongman and a vegan outlifts you. There is no benefit to including meat and animal products in your diet and Patrick has stated that a vegan diet helped increase his strength. Being led to this lifestyle by ethical reasons, I was expecting a decrease in, in my performances actually. And I was completely surprised by the fact that the exact opposite happened. My numbers went up, my recovery got better, um, and everything was, was perfect. And these increases in strength and performance are likely due to vegan diets being so good at reducing inflammation, and there is research showing that diets high in alkalizing foods like fruits and vegetables help promote muscle mass. Even other big strong professional athletes, including Mr. Universe Barney DePlessy and 300 pound NFL defensive lineman David Carter, have gone vegan and increased their athletic performance and have gained size and strength. Elliot has absolutely no evidence that meat is necessary or even at all beneficial to gaining size and strength, and all he can do is make appeal to nature fallacies and try and sell you this idea by romanticizing meat eating. It's what we were born to eat. It's what our ancestors did to survive. 
Do you think that kind of bullshit is going to help you become the best version of yourself? Or does objectively looking at the best medical science available and basing your diet off of that help you become the best version of yourself? Haha, <laughs> look who it is! How's your butt doing, Billy? Is it ready for another beating? Fuck you, Keegan! You're a pussy-ass little bitch and I'm gonna stomp your ass! You asked for it, dipshit! Bring it on, faggot! Pussy-ass little bitch! And lastly, I don't think being the best version of yourself should only include physical strength and athleticism. Patrick Baboumian, Barney DePlessy, and David Carter, they're all top-level athletes, but they still recognize the importance of being kind to animals. Being the best version of yourself should also mean being kind and compassionate, and not just selfishly focusing on your own physical strength. My true strength lies in not seeing weakness, as weakness. My strength needs no victims. My strength is my compassion. We have decided to become vegans uh, for various reasons. Namely, obviously, the love of animals, um, the, the way animal production and the dairy industry and the mass sort of uh, farming processes that are happening these days is just unethical and we don't believe in it. It's, 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 very, it's very cool and I, I get the opportunity to show a lot of people, to show the world that you can be compassionate and still get badass and still get strong. The strength went out. Uh, I surpassed all of my PRs. I didn't think I could be this strong and this is after being vegan and it just, it's an amazing feeling to be able to to, you know, to help everyone in the world and help all of you guys out and all of us, because I'm with you now, but uh, <laughs> to, to, to show that, you know, you don't have to take a life to gain muscle. So Elliot might help and inspire a lot of people and some of you might even be fans of his, but remember, on the path to becoming the best version of yourself, you're going to hear misinformation, you're going to be wrong a few times, and you're going to have to unlearn and relearn a few things. And hopefully for some of you, Elliot included, nutrition is one of those things. So become the best version of yourself by making some vegan gains. Beef. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and how.